Naruto plopped down on the couch, he sighed happily. Finally, he was back in his tower. He had left clones during the mission, tied to the tower with the seal to care for the garden in place so he didn't have to do any cleaning when he got back. He accepted a bowl of soup and some food Kimimaro held out for him, and dug in as Kimimaro did the same. He enjoyed the silence as they ate. When he finished, he moved to the kitchen, setting his dishes in the sink. Kimimaro did the same a moment later. Then Naruto pulled a note from his pocket. The Hokage had handed it to him as they had returned from their mission, but Naruto had waited to open it. He frowned as he looked at it. So, they wanted to use his forest for the shooting exams. He gave an irritated sigh, but quickly wrote a reply, and this summoned a raven to take it. He glanced around and sighed again. He'd have to remind Sarutobi to tell all the participants to stay out of the areas that are not being used in the exam. Then, Naruto smirked. At least this year, he'd be here for the exams. And as it was his place, the referees couldn't kick him out. That meant he would get to watch the preliminaries in the arena. And maybe even tail a few in the forest for fun. You'd best let him go, Naruto said calmly. Sakura fidgeted beside him. The boy he was speaking to just sneered, attention momentarily away from the boy, struggling against his hold. And what are you going to do about it? The boy taunted. Said boy raised his fist ready to hit the kid in his hand. Naruto was five feet closer a second later. He swung his arm up activating the ceiling tattoo on his wrist. His spear slid into his hand fluidly. The sharp steel pressed against the boy's neck. Everyone froze. The boy's teammate, a blonde girl, reached for a large battle fan on her back, a nervous look on her face. The boy Naruto was threatening and dropped Konohamaru. Okage's grandson scooted back and with a yelp of thanks, took off with his two friends. Naruto kept the spear pressed to the cat boy's throat. During the exams, Naruto stated softly, You are a guest in our village. Threatening our citizens or ninja can result in your arrest and war, especially when that citizen is the Hokage's grandson. The boy licked his lips nervously. Naruto pulled the spear away, resealing it. Naruto stepped closer to the boy so he could speak without Sakura hearing. The boy remained still as Naruto placed a clawed hand over the area of his heart. He gave the boy an absolutely blank look. Give me one reason, he said in a whisper, and I'll rip your heart out with my bare hands. The boy choked and shuddered. Naruto backed up. Kankuro, Tamari. Naruto glanced up at the redhead. Sasuke, who had stood watching the scene in the tree, spun to also look at the redhead behind him. Hello, Gara. the blonde Tamari stuttered. Gara's eyes slid to meet Naruto's, and Naruto just smelled uh, the blood uh, coating the kid. Their eyes held a moment before the kid sandwiched between his teammates. What's your name? he asked. Naruto just gave him a lazy look. Naruto. Naruto Uzumaki. Gara, I think we'll be great friends, Gara. Naruto smirked lazily. The redhead narrowed his eyes, but didn't say anything, which seemed to shock his teammates. Naruto gave an audible chuckle as he walked off. Naruto idly looked over his paper. Slowly, a smirk formed, a tugging in his lips, tuning eccentrics and papers. Sometimes, Kakashi was great. He quickly went over a list of villages that would attend. Kumo was definitely not coming. After he had rescued Hayate and all the papers he had stolen, they had found out Kumo was going to join two other villages that were going to invade Kona during the exam. With all the papers he had gotten, the third had easily blackmailed them into staying in their own village. It had given them a heads up though. Naruto smirked as he thought of the upcoming battle, the day of the final round of the Chunin exams. Suna and Oto versus Konoha. It was going to be fun. He was a bit torn between fighting for the third and letting the two villages tear Konoha apart. But in the end, he had chosen the Okage side, which was Konoha's side also. He carefully tucked the papers away. He heard Sakura fire questions at Kakashi about the Chunin exams. This was the smartest student in their year. He shook his head absently and gave an absent wave before taking off down the street. 
he needed to get a few groceries before heading home. Naruto watched Sasuke arrogantly step up to the door with a smirk and point out the genjutsu. Couldn't the fool see you and weed out some of the weaker competition? He sighed in irritation but watched. A moment later, Sasuke was off to fight with Rock Lee. Five minutes later, they were entering room 301 with Sasuke scowling about his wounded pride. As soon as they stepped into the room, Sasuke was assaulted by Ino as the rest of the rookie Genin stepped forwards to greet them. Naruto slid into the shadows of the room to Hinata near the wall. Hi, Naruto. She smiled shyly. He nodded, a greeting looking her up and down. She wore the same black shorts, purple tank top, black trench coat, same braid uh, he gave uh, her a half smile. Suddenly, someone bumped into him. He turned to look at Ino, who was getting up from the floor, glaring at Kiba, who had tripped her. The boy was staring at Naruto in surprise. Ino looked up at him and her eyes grew wide. Most of the other rookies went silent. Naruto had been feared among the rookies ever since he had killed Mizuki. They always avoided him. Their immediate silence drew some attention. Naruto just gave Ino a flat look. Sorry, she muttered, stumbling away from him to hide behind Shoji, who had even paused in eating his chips. I'm sorry, t too. Kiba quickly choked out, taking an extra step back. Naruto gave him a flat look, a small glare hidden behind the blank mask. The boy whimpered with his dog and backed up again. Some of the other Genin were giving him second weary looks now. Naruto glared at the assembly of Genin, releasing a wave of killer intent for a brief second. Everyone drew back, choking under the pressure. Just as quickly as it hit them, Naruto drew it back and returned to standing by Hinata. No one even dared sneak glances at him. Naruto idly drew symbols all over the back of his test paper. He didn't particularly care about cheating. He could cheat, he could finish the test on his own knowledge, or he could do neither. As he finished the last symbol, taking up the last of the space on his test, he leaned back in his chair. As there was only a minute until the time was up, Naruto reached over and plucked the paper beside him. The kid he had taken it from gave a yelp. What the hell? Team 17 is out, Ibiki snapped, motioning to the yelling kid's team. Some people were obviously motioning to Naruto, who idly copied the answers onto his page. No one said anything, though, as talking would have them disqualified. As Naruto finished copying the last question, Ibiki straightened. Time's up. Immediately, a kid leapt to his feet. Why didn't you call the blonde that is obvious cheating? He asked, glaring. I said you get two points taken off for every time we catch you cheating. You start with ten points. That was his first time we caught his team cheating, so he only had two points taken off. There were some obvious gaping and curses. Naruto, I at least smirked. Naruto stood with the rest of the gang and his Ango leapt back out the window. Most followed her, but Naruto paused. Morino, he called. Ibiki raised a brow at him as the five other Chunin in the room paused to watch the conversation. I see you've been training Hinata well. Is she as sadistic as you yet? He asked softly. The man gave a sigh. Sadly, she's too nice, but she's good anyways. Naruto gave an idle nod. Then he moved to the window to follow the other Genin out. As he passed a Chunin who glared at him, he slapped his paper to the man's chest. A moment later, the man vanished and the paper floated to the floor. The other Chunin quickly pulled Kunai out and watched him warily. What did you just do, Uzumaki? Ibiki asked in surprise as he leaned over to grab the test. His eyes widened as he saw the symbols. Naruto shrugged lazily. I sealed him. How is that possible? The fourth was a seal master and he tried for years on how to learn how to put humans in scrolls, Ibiki asked with narrowed eyes. Naruto gave a slight twitch of his lips. Just press the middle symbol to release him. He may be a bit woozy on his way out, and tell him not to glare at people so often. Some could take it as insulting. Naruto strode to the window, ready to leap out before he paused. Oh, and please burn that when you're done. Don't want it getting out and about. A moment later, he was after the group that had left. He knew Ibiki would listen. Naruto gazed around and quickly took notice of where they were. He turned to look at Sakura and Sasuke who watched him warily. They had been wary around him since the slaughter on the bridge. This way, he said simply motioning what seemed to be a random direction. How do you know? Sakura asked scowling. 
been here before. They didn't particularly want to ask why. What about the scroll? Sasuke asked. My animals will get it. They quickly nodded, agreeing, and followed him as he dashed through the trees. Five minutes later, Akira joined them, uh, launching through the branches. He dropped a bloody heaven scroll in Naruto's hand. The two behind him swallowed, not wanting to know what had happened to the team with that scroll. Then Naruto dropped back beside the two who had stayed a few feet back from the tiger. In a motion too quick for her to see, Naruto had grabbed Sakura around the waist and uh, leapt forward, dropping her on Akira's back. She gave a yelp of shock as she gripped the fur in surprise. Naruto glanced at Sasuke. Get on, this is faster. Sasuke saw no reason to disagree, and threw himself onto the back of the tiger, grabbing on with his legs. Naruto jumped on behind the other two and Akira took off even faster, the three not hindering his speed at all. As they entered the tower, Naruto looked directly at a camera and smirked lazily. The other two didn't notice as they gazed around the room. Sakura started to decipher the useless word in the large painting and Naruto ignored her. He just opened both scrolls behind their backs, startling them with a burst of smoke brought Iruka. The man stood uh, gaping at them for a few moments, working his jaw in disbelief before he shakily congratulated them and told them where they could stay and where not to go. It didn't really matter as Naruto had decided to set up some security seals the night before, making sure all the areas he didn't want people in couldn't be entered. Naruto watched Iruko leave and Sakura and Sasuke walk off to explore. When they were gone, he idly slipped into the staff room. It had a few couches, a table, the TVs, the video cameras, and such. Inside sat some of the Jonin instructors waiting for their teams. Most would leave before the day was out and return in five days. Kotetsu and Izumo sat near the TVs monitoring the few cameras. As Naruto stepped in, everyone fell silent and stared at him. Um, what are you doing in here, kid? Asuma asked. Naruto gave him a blank look and walked through the room to the door to a set of stairs. He pressed his thumb against the seal and it unlocked the door. People gave him looks of disbelief as he vanished through the door and up the stairs, locking the door behind. So, only certain people knew he owned the place. Interesting.